Hey guys, uh, we are live on the 24th of June in 2021, and this is the last games where we have different themed days for each day of the month. Today's theme is Desert Island Day. What soap, primarily, would you have with you if you could only use one? Is kind of the idea. Of course, it's open to interpretation. Somebody could make a post and make an argument that, uh, you know, it lasts the longest. And so this is the one I would use. You know, as long as you sell it, I mean, that's there's freedom in the games in that sense. Um, I chose one of my favorites, and it is Saponificio Veracino Tundra Artica. And it's a sandalwood scented soap with... Uh, hints of cranberry and lichen. And allegedly, I'm sure it's true, those two extra ingredients are good for your, your face and skin and things like that. I think one of them, maybe even both, uh, helps to reduce inflammation and things like that. That's, that's in my brain somewhere tucked away. Uh, so this is the uh, 400th use of the Nasset, Nasset blade plus one. And because uh, yesterday was 400 on the 23rd. And so today is 401, and we're going to put it inside my, pretty much my favorite razor, the car of Christopher Bradley. It is a beautiful but highly functional. I can uh, change the base plates to get uh, super smooth shaves at the lower end of the spectrum, and I can go all the way up to a D and get more uh, shaves with a little bit more aggression. But even then, because of the way it clamps down so close to the edge, it's still giving me a smooth control and consistency. If I've got a blade that's been smoothed out with a lot of uses, 60, 80, 100 uses, then I can bring in base plates that are more than a D and enjoy those. So that's kind of fun. And then, of course, it also has the open comb versions as well as the solid bar versions. Generally speaking, the open comb is equivalent to a, an aggression to the next letter above it. So a B open comb is similar in aggression to a C solid bar, that kind of thing. All right. And then the brush is one of my favorites. I just uh, tried it out one day and came to love it. The Umo is the, uh, it has, has one of the knots. It's maybe called the HT or something like that. And it is the knot that Maggard uses for their super high density knot. And so I thought, well, that's wonderful. Uh, that knot is getting rave reviews. Let's see what else Umo has. And that's O-U-M-O. Let's see what else Umo has. And because a lot of people get their knots from them and they maybe call it something different, you know, but they also had the, um, this is the Manchurian, the super high density Manchurian. And so uh, I tried it. I put it in this special Wolf Whiskers handle that was developed for a shave meetup. It's a short guy, but I'll, I do the ergonomics work well, but it is very short. And so I do get pretty messy on my fingertips and I, uh, I put it in and man, it just turns out I really like this. Uh, this is similar to that Saponificio Veracino knot from yesterday, the brush from yesterday, because it's a, a two band, as you can see by the large black patch but it's got very, very soft tips. They're not super jelly at all, uh, but still quite soft. And it's got a nice, easy splay. And this one, of course, has tons of density. This is probably more dense than the SV brush from yesterday. So let's get this guy in the water. As you can see, he is dry. I didn't, didn't pre-soak him. Fortunately, he doesn't need as much soak time as like a boar brush might. So with the carve, I decided on what gap to use, what base plate here. I've been, I've been trying the C out for a little bit, but lately I've been doing that against the grain pass just in this trouble zone right here. And I've been enjoying how some, especially some of the more mild razors handle that with a, a good bit of ease and lack of discomfort. And so let's try a B solid bar. And so that is what we have today, the B solid bar. Uh, and I did 
change things up a little bit. You can see the bead blasting finish on the plate here, but then this has a little bit of a shine. And I just took Brasso and also some Mother's Chrome Polish. That's what I started out with, and then I switched to Brasso. Uh, and I just hand polished that with a, with a cloth. Um, several sessions, just whenever I just felt like I was watching something on TV or something, and I just, you know, whipped out the brass zone and worked on it. I might keep doing that, um, and it gets a little bit of shine, a little bit shinier each time. Uh, I, I like the patina of these brass razors quite a bit, and so, uh, of course, when you polish the head, um, then you are killing the patina of that surface, and uh, in a sense, I have a two-tone look because the top is polished, and then everything else, like with the base plate, it's not. So here's the NASIP. We're going to do 401. The uh, little identifying marks should be visible there. And we're going to keep on going with the NASIP for all of June. I've got to get up to 426 if I want to try to catch up with uh, Mirna183, a fellow Reddit user. Hey, Peter. Ah, uh, that's right. Roger that. Well, you can kind of Maybe have me going in the background, and uh, if I if I uh, and you can catch up or something like that. So the NASA is ready. As you can see, we do have exposed blade tabs with this, and so uh, apparently enough people complained about it. I think it's fine, but the enough people, uh, notably famous, the uh, Michael Friedberg. Um, he's got a wet shaving channel. If you have are brand new to this type of shaving, you may not have heard of him yet, but he is uh, well known. I love his videos. He's got a lot out there. He covers a large uh, swath of material. He's got a wet shaving tutorial. It's four parts. It's wonderful. I highly recommend it. He's a face lather. So you watch me if you want to learn bowl lathering, that sort of thing. He's great for face lathering. And uh, but he um I guess the way where, the way he shaves, he he gets his ears scraped up a little bit, and of course he might shave under his nose too. And so sometimes they, you know, those rough edges might cause some irritation. And so they created a top cap. I think they call it the wide body that covers the tabs there. If you end up getting irritated by the by the blades, ah, yep. So Jay here has scraped his nose. With the uh, with the exposed tabs, so you do have to be do have to be careful. Uh, I kind of avoid that by growing this little guard area here that prevents me from scraping my nose. All right, so we're loaded up, and this is a hard soap. It's a vegan soap, but it's a nice performing soap. Uh, no matter what medium you choose. Sometimes tallow gives a soap an extra edge in terms of uh, creaminess, slickness, that sort of thing. So it is, I think in m many cases, a, a tallow soap is often going to be able to beat up, metaphorically speaking, a, uh, a vegan soap. However, there are definitely plenty of vegan soaps out there. Uh, that, well, not, let's not say plenty. There are definitely several vegan soap makers out there who have amazing bases, and that, that can beat out some tallow soaps and and are just so good that you the, the difference starts to disappear between the tallow versus the vegan because they, they've just done such a good job with them. Southern Witchcrafts has a very, very good vegan base um, and uh, Sabonificio Veracino as well has a vegan base. I'll need to tilt myself down just a hair. There we go. All right. Um, and this, like a, like most hard soaps, if you come to them only every couple of months, then they do dry out in between the time when you use them. And so the uh, uh, you can choose how you want to handle that. Uh, obviously, you just need to add a little bit extra load time or you can just come back to it more frequently. Right. Um, while my brush soaks a little bit, because I just got something in the mail the other day, I wanted to share it with you. I like this razor case. I'm going to compare it with this razor case. This is the Spearhead Shaving Travel Razor Case. I've done a video specifically on this product before. I like it a lot. 
And I got this one in recently. And this is either from Yaki or DS Cosmetics or it's on AliExpress. And it is a, a very similar case to the Spearhead one. And, uh, and so these are the three I want to talk about just for a second. Yeah, Major Mince Meat echoes my uh, praise for Southern Witchcrafts. Yeah. Um, something I like about this one, it opens and closes with a magnet. You can put your blade between the two magnets, and now you're carrying the blade that you're using as well as that. Now, that would be like a trip between your bedroom and the bathroom or something like that. I mean, you probably wouldn't want to store a blade right there for longer trips, you know. But uh, I do it quite often um, because I don't have a lot of my stuff. Uh, most of the time, you don't want to store all your shaving gear in the bathroom, even if you have the space because of the humidity. You don't want that affecting like your straight razors, your blades, that sort of thing. At least most people don't. Uh, and so this one does have the shaft here for the handle. And then your head goes up here. And one of the thing that I, things that I like about this case that you find missing with the, these other two cases is that you can see the handle through the side of the case. And so if you have a few different cases in play and they're all sitting on a table, it's just, it's very fast to look at this and see which razor's in there and grab it and go. Whereas with these, if you don't remember, you've got to open them up. And of course, if you don't have very many razors, if you've only got one or two, you could pick and say, well, a certain razor goes in this one, and then maybe I've got another case, and a certain razor goes in that one, and then your problem's solved. But I just really like that ability to see the razor because I did buy two of these cases, and it's very easy for me to see that, well, that one has the charcoal goods every day. This one has the uh, razor that we're using today, the car of Christopher Bradley. Um, and so that was just a little bit of praise and a different feature of that one. Now let's look at the spearhead versus um, the one from AliExpress, probably Yaki. And you can see that this one's taller. So they gave it a little bit more material. Um, this one does have a, a little thicker razor in it, but um, I don't think that would account for all the extra height. Uh, this one, the material is stronger. It's tougher. This one's a little, little, but it's also more, uh, it's softer, slightly softer to the touch. Uh, but I got a feeling this one was going to soften up after time, over time anyway. So this one, strong, uh, strong material for sure. And uh, it looks like I, I prefer the trim material in the spearhead case. Uh, this one's a thicker trim, uh, meaning wider, uh, but it uh, doesn't look like the, the stitching and stuff is is quite as nice. It looks pretty good. I didn't find any places where the stitching got weird. Uh, there is this place over here where they had to start and stop the stitching. I mean, you got to start and stop it somewhere. Uh, and But other, other than that, the stitching looks pretty good on this. Uh, now, here's the big difference. This one costs maybe six or eight bucks, and this one costs like 28 bucks, uh, and that's all before shipping. Um, so, that makes it that makes them quite different. If you if you want to shop USA uh, USA made, uh, a very good uh, person in business, the spirit guy from Spearhead. I love to support him. I love to use his products and brag on him. Um, and so you can you can buy this one if you don't have the money, you know. Then maybe you get this one. Uh, so you know you obviously make that choice yourself. Um, no, Jay, you uh, you're probably not going to be able to put. A Gillette adjustable in there. I take that back. See, because this is what they look like. Now, you would not be able to put a Gillette adjustable in this faux leather case here. Hey, Zesty, welcome. But for instance, if we, we could take out this... Um, We could take out the saber here from Blackland. And uh, to answer your question, Jay, you know, could you put a, uh, a Gillette adjustable in here? Well, this is basically about the shape and size of a Gillette adjustable. Okay, at the very least, you could just lay it in there and close. It's not fastened by any of the elastic. You could just lay it in there and then it will snap shut. 
that wasn't made for that. And so, as you can see, it looks a little strange. It looks like we're, we're stuffing Aunt Lulu into a dress that's two sizes too small. However, um, it looks like it's pretty secure. I mean, I would have to really kind of pull on this, you know, to be able to get it to uncurl. And so I'm confident that it would travel pretty well. And then, of course, you could probably put it in some of the elastic bands that are normal. This one is entitled intended for use of the blade pack. And this one up here would be for the head. Uh, and so if you had an adjustable, then you could you could do that, you know, so you could with that. And so uh, let's take a look right quick at the insides. And we're using elastic bands. Spearhead was using elastic bands to uh, to secure everything. And here's a difference. Spearhead, like the khaki set that this is based off of, the vintage Gillette khaki set, Spearhead put space between this and this. And the khaki set used that space for the storage of a mirror. And so if you have a, a kind of a survival mirror, then obviously you could use that with the spearhead case. On the cheaper one down below there, it doesn't have that ability to put anything. It's not hollow back there. They just stitched everything across together. It's probably faster and cheaper, right? And so... Uh, so that is a, an important difference. If you never plan to use this, then that difference isn't going to matter as much to you. So um, now this snap here is a, it's got a lot of firmness to it. And sometimes I feel like it's going to maybe cause some wear here as this button pulls up, you know, but who knows whether that's going to happen. So here's a, a vintage Gillette tech in there. Now um, with both of these cases, there is the potential for some metal rubbing. See, the end of the ball in tech is touching sometimes the head there. And so if you're traveling far, if the case is going to be in a vibratory, if that's a word, environment, then you may want to wrap the handle. Uh, and this would apply for the, the saber as well in the other case. Um, wrap the handle in something. And that way, if the, if the two pieces touch, then we don't have any marking going on. So let's just uh, take this tech out to answer Jay's question about with the uh, Yaki version. And like I said, see, there's no way to get behind that. They just, they stitch right across it. Um, so then if we do the same thing and put that guy in there, let's see how he works. This seems to be a little bit of a larger case. And so it, uh, it looks like he's going to, He's going to handle it a little better. He's uh, so this guy, the spearhead case is is more uh, more like a tailored suit, if you will, and so it's going to be more compact. And this guy looks like uh, it would work, and so uh, it looks like that would be fine for a uh, vintage Gillette adjustable razor um, if you needed to do that, or of course any razor that uh, is in this shape you know, would fit uh, well in this, uh, the larger of the two cases. And so that's, uh, but uh, as you can see, it uses the same um, elastic in the same grouping. The, put that down, the head is in the two big loops right here. A blade pack goes in this one, and then the handle goes in, uh, in this one up here, uh, like you saw earlier with the tech. Uh, and yeah, the stitching inside looks pretty good. Uh, the important stuff going around the borders here looks, uh, looks pretty good. Um, so I can, I could recommend this for the cost. Um, if you, if you want to shop, uh, from China or whatever like that. So I just wanted to show, show that off. It's, it's less expensive. If you can't afford the spearhead one, um, then, then this is a reasonable alternative. And, and they may have different patterns as well. I'm not sure. I like the green, so I got it. So I just wanted to bring that to you guys. Now that the br brush is ready to go, let's put this, this spearhead case away as well. Uh, let me get my face wet, and then we'll load up.
you know, before the lather games, I was, uh, life was really busy. And so it was a little easier to skip a shave or, or two every once in a while, which was rare for me uh, for many, for several years there. Uh, but uh, I, and so I used to have to tell you guys on the videos, hey, uh, this I'm shaving on two days of growth. I'm shaving on three days of growth. Well, not with the lather games. I never have to say that because it's always about 24 hours. All right. So get rid of a lot of this water. Now, if you're doing your own personal thing, then you may have some shortcuts. You may leave some water in there so that you don't have to add it later to the lather bowl. So you can play around with it that way. All right. Oh, man, this is just so, so good. All right. How long do we want to do? It's been a while since I used it. OK, the minute is going to roll around uh, the five seconds before the minute right there. Let's just kind of uh, play it by eye here. And we are getting some pretty quick suds and this is a wooden bowl that uh, i got off amazon i think it's parker brand and i i trimmed the the puck of soap to fit in there okay so we're looking at uh that's 30 seconds of loading right there um, we may have okay just for grin since i haven't used this in a while let's do 10 more seconds so five more just to kind of make sure that we've got enough lather. And there we go. And as usual, I'm going to use this extra as a face wash. Lovely. And um, man, yeah. You can rake the extra in the bowl, or you can just rinse it down the drain. If it's really airy like that, you know, it's uh, it's probably not a big, a big waste. And this one is tricky because if I get this messy, I've got this paper right up on the bottom that tells the, the soap. And so sometimes I like to clean this up with a, a dry cleanup method instead of uh, rinsing with water. So I'll put him aside for later. And that is why sometimes when you see people evaluate a soap, they do it quite completely. And they might tell you, hey, this one has waterproof labels. And I always dismissed that for a couple of years as I was reading those types of reviews. And I thought, well, who cares? You know, so let's start working on this lather here. I thought, who cares? And now I know. It's because some of the makers uh, a few years ago still were using uh, less expensive uh, labels that were waterproof. And so then when it comes time to rinse your tub, things like that, then you have potential to, uh, to have the ink bleed or deteriorate over time, that sort of thing. It's not a strong scent. It's not going to overpower anybody. Got my 40 milliliters of water here. A lot of the Saponificio Veracino soaps are, are not going to bowl anybody over. I kind of even keel. Even the even some of the uh, gels, the aftershave lotions, you know, that I, I, I got a sampler, uh, a little sample size of some of those. And a lot of them were very easy going. Yeah, exactly, Zesty. It's not a deal breaker, but it is nice. I mean, because you can just adjust the way you, you rinse out things, right? You know, take a, an extra dry towel. Hey, you know, that reminds me because the soap would be left on the, on the hand towel, you know, if you used it to clean up soap instead of rinsing something out. Reminds me, I put on my COVID mask the other day, my face mask. Uh, I went into Walmart 
and I smelled the aftershave balm that I've used the day before. <laughs> so that was neat. But I kind of refreshed my scent there. It was lingering and I was able to enjoy it again. For the scents after the shave, I have some favorites as well because this is Desert Island Day and I picked one of my favorite brushes. I picked uh, one of my favorite soaps and the uh, scent for the splash is the uh, gray vetiver scent. Then, and uh, it is duplicated by Sterling in the Responders for Life splash. And uh, what is it, Tom Ford gray vetiver? Yeah. So uh, uh, fine accoutrements did it as well as fresh vetiver. So uh, pretty much the same product, the Sterling R4L Responders for Life and the uh, fine accoutrements fresh vetiver, same splash basically in terms of scent. And this is getting better and better, a little more elastic as we go. And then for the final, I did go with fine. But I chose American Blend because I'm a big fan of the American Blend scent from Fine as well. Um, I wish Sterling would bring this, the same scent for the Responders for Life into their normal uh, rotation. I mean, I don't need to get it because I've got a bunch of fine fresh vetiver. It's going to last me for years. But for the sake of everybody else, I don't think uh, that that gray vetiver scent is available uh, anywhere else. I guess it's just not, nobody's calling for it, right? I have met plenty of people who enjoy it. So we've got, since this is a vegan soap, and I think this base, ah, we've got some nice elasticity going there. I think this base might like it if I don't push too much water into it. I'll leave it a little bit more dry than I might normally. Let me rot wash the uh, stuff off my face here. I think that my memory, Jay, says that the Gurlian vetiver is different from Tom Ford's gray vetiver. Uh, somewhere in my brain, I think I remember somebody doing a little bit of a write-up. See, uh, yeah, Jay, that sounds about right. Maybe the green vetiver. And it is definitely a more green scent uh, than the gray, you know, vetiver. So I believe that's that's right. I believe the green vetiver is based on Gurleyan. Hey, Ben, welcome, welcome. This is Desert Island Day. I am using one of my favorite brushes, the Umo Super High Density Manchurian Knot. And I am using a Carf Christopher Bradley razor. This is the 401st shave with the Nasset. I am going to be using Sterling Responders for Life, which is Gray Vetiver, something we're talking about right now. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. See, Zesty knows his fragrances. So if he says what he says, it goes. In this case, uh, Gurlian's is quite different than Tom Ford's Vetiver. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, and then as the cologne, we're going to be using American Blend from Fine Accoutrements. All right, so let us lather up. We've got plenty. Turns out I didn't need to do 40 seconds, but, you know, I just didn't want to have to add more back in, you know. Feeling these great soft tips, and this has medium backbone, so it's keeping those tips right at my face. It's not letting those bristles those hairs bend over too much to where I'm, I'm just, I'm not feeling the nice soft tips to where I'm only feeling like the sides, you know, nobody wants, most people don't want that. And yeah, this could take some more water if it, uh, if I wanted to give it, I tried this little brush and noticed that that knot is just very nice. I 
think I, I think I set this one. I definitely set it myself. I think I set this one almost as high as it could go so that the backbone wouldn't be an issue for me. I'm remembering that uh, daily challenge the other day. Oh, speaking of which, I need to look and see what the daily challenge is today. I think I read about it. Oh, well, yeah, I did read about it. Let's do a check right quick. I don't want to forget. <laughs> ben, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, no, I think I'd maybe you know, take a brand new Nasset with me on a desert island. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Okay, they both, uh, they both, both the Tom Ford and the Gurleyan feature vetiver, but Gurleyan's goes down an old timey barber shop road, apparently, I guess is what he meant to say. Um, and then Tom Ford is much more contemporary, fresh scent. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You see, uh, Jay, if you want to try um, some of these uh, girly and vetiver type scents, you can, like Zesty says, get on eBay and buy a decant, which means they've taken a big bottle and separated it into smaller ones so that people can, yeah, speak or try. Mr. Chewbacca, welcome. Welcome. Oh, remember a bad, that's right. That's right. A bad purchase. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. Chewbacca is a wonderful game player on the Lather Games. Uh, if you want some fun reading, then he's got some great posts this month, that's for sure. Um, so a bad purchase, a bad purchase. Well, one that jumps to mind for me is my, one of my first, probably the first razor I ever purchased at an antique shop. We don't have a lot around here. And uh, so let's go again. We've got the B solid bar here. Oh man, that's comfy. I uh, went to this antique store and you know, it's one of those where everybody gets a little area and they put out their stuff. And then I guess every once in a while they come and maintain their little booth. You know, there's like one person at the cash register and all the items have a little code on them so that the different shops, the little different mini shops can get credit for their stuff. And a lot of it's overpriced uh, because they kind of have a captive market. But I did find a, in a case, a super speed, the 40 style, which I definitely like. And it was a Z4, if I recall correctly. And it was one of those times where I had done some research into the date codes and things like that, but not enough quite yet to know what I was doing for sure. And something in my mind was telling me, hey, the, the Z is a coveted letter, you know, it might be special somehow. And so I paid almost not quite twice as much what the razor was worth, you know. There's that. Um, but that, I mean, that was still a good razor. All right. Next pass. Rinse. You know, I, I think what takes the cake, the bad purchases that I've made um, in the beginning when I didn't know about all these forums and the Shave Bazaar and places like that to get good gear and get recommendations. All I knew was Amazon. Now, I did pour over the reviews like, like the old Sears wish book full of toys. Um, and I read them and I, I did only buy things with just a lot of really good reviews. And so I didn't make any huge mistakes, but um, I did buy the Vikings Blade Godfather because I fell into their hype and I didn't realize that I could buy the same thing for uh, $15 instead of $40. Uh, and so I returned it. Fortunately, it was Amazon. So I was able to return it once I found the Biley version. And so that worked out okay. Um, I also bought, I've uh, falling into the Amazon hype. I, 
I probably ended up with, I don't know, six or eight tubs of Taylor of Old Bond Street. Now that does an okay job, but it's a, as creams, you know, um, it does an okay job, but it, I, I, probably not really worth the price. Um, you're paying a little bit for the name there. And uh, now a couple of them I still have. I still have German Street and Mr. Taylor's um, because I really like that German Street scent. But I ended up selling all the rest of my Taylor of Old Bond Street because it just doesn't perform nearly as well as so many of our other options. Even, even Sterling costs less than Taylor of Old Bond Street cream. It lasts way longer and it performs much better. Some of those scents, of course, may not be as sophisticated as the ones that have been in Taylor of Old Bond Street for so long, but, you know. Sterling still has tons of scents that I really like. So the Taylor of Old Bond Street, you know, I bought too many of those and uh, I just didn't know. Um, because there are a lot of people out there that really like it and they post comments on Amazon. But you know what I started reading? I remember specifically reading some posts. Well, you know, this TOBS is, is pretty good, but kind of doesn't compare to Barrister and Man. So I started looking around and that started me on the trail. And eventually I would come to find soaps like Barrister and Man and Declaration Grooming, Sterling, Holy cow, those kind of guys. This uh, lather's perfect, by the way. Got it just right. Let's look at the um, let's look at the viscosity here. Moving on its own accord there. Very fluid. It's not super elastic. It's got a little bit of a lightness to it. Um, you know, airiness, that kind of it's like a an airy elasticity, but it works great on the face. <laughs> Chewbacca says that uh, his first DE was from Amazon and it broke. And that was actually what I was going to say next. So I've got those creams that I bought, including Trumpers. Um, Trumpers is the same boat as TB TOBS. It just, it's, it's good. It does the job. Sometimes it has good scent and, uh, but it just doesn't compare to some of the other ones and even some other cheaper ones. Um, but my other kind of uh, bad purchase was several, maybe 12, Mercour, Jagger, and Parker razors. I just looked at the differences, read the reviews over and over, and I bought several, and I sold almost all of them. Because so many of them have the same exact head. It's just a different handle. So a nice quick little pass. And the performance of this is, is really nice. Let's do a little cross grain from the other direction pass here. And this bee is doing very well, very comfortable. I bet he's going to do fine with the uh, against the grain work right here. Yeah, it's crazy how many of those Mercours are this different handles on the same head and people, you know, buy several of them and they basically got the same head going all the time. And yeah, uh, what uh, Chewbacca was talking about, it's very common. This may have been what happened to him. He didn't say, but um uh, uh, yeah, actually, major mints made mine was from my first one was from Walmart, too. Uh, what happens is the, the threading on that bolt that goes into the handle. Um, if with the Zamac razors like Parker and Mercure and, uh, you know, Jagger and Muley, when that plating wears off of those threads, then it now opens up the uh, pot metal underneath to corrosion. And it doesn't take too long if that corrosion isn't dried out. It doesn't take too long for it to break. And so what happens a lot is the top cap comes off and a bit of the end of that bolt is still left in the handle. And so you can't get it in the razor anymore. 
Uh, if you're if you're lucky, you could maybe get some kind of screw extractor utility and get it out. Then you could reuse the handle, find another head for it. But I think most people aren't that aren't that lucky. Ben's uh, first one was the uh, the Parker ninety six R. Yep, yeah, and it was too aggressive for him. The second was the twenty three C, and he still got that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chewbacca says, yep, that's pretty much what happened. The bolt broke. And that's why I'm a little down on Mercours because um, all the people on Amazon and stuff are saying German engineering, German quality and all this. But it's a Zamac razor, and it's and many of the time it's going to break like that unless you specifically dry that bolt off after every use. Then you can get it get it to go for several years, if not more. I'm not saying it's not going to last, uh, but it just takes that kind of meticulous care, and a lot of people don't know that going into it. Um, because you don't have to always buy brass or stainless steel or bronze razors. You can you can do those Zamac ones. But just maybe get the buy Lee version where you're paying eight bucks for it, 10 bucks for it, instead of the Mercure prices where you're getting a pot metal razor for stainless steel prices. Yeah, that 34C, I think, isn't that the super popular one that is recommended to people so much? I bought one and I think I've used it twice. I bought one just to have it as a comparison because it's just so ubiquitous that I just wanted to have it to be able to have it as a reference point. Okay, uh, Jay had the 34C and then uh, bought a Slim, and uh, and he's only got two razors. Well, I tell you what, uh, you know, the 34C is widely, highly regarded. Just uh, keep it dried out when you shave with it so it doesn't uh, break in that same way. Now, the Slim is brass at its core, and so you don't have to worry about that quite as much at all. Um, but the Slim is a tremendous razor. Uh, you get wonderful smooth shaves if you dial it down to a, a low uh, setting. So this I'm putting on like the third pass and or fourth pass and we've still got plenty of lather. So I think a, the 30 seconds of loading would have been just fine. Ah, yes. See, uh, Chewbacca, that's probably why many of us jumped online to and found the good stuff. You know what? What's pitiful is, uh, well, to me, it seems pitiful that somebody has a razor break, they get online, you see them post in a forum, and this is not going to be on, on our wet shaving forum and Reddit because people will definitely advise people that, you know, that's going to happen with every pop metal razor if you don't clean it out and if you, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, when people, when it breaks, and then people advise them just buy another expensive pop metal razor. They recommend, oh, well, try the new Mercur this, you know, or, or whatever. And I'm like, no, because the th same thing's going to happen. But uh, yeah, you fa he found the sub and the rest is history. Uh, Chewbacca, you got what? I was reading some of your stuff recently and you got the the second place last year in the, the shit posting award and uh, just amazing effort and creativity. And, uh, and one, oh, I know why I was reading you. I was bidding on that uh, Chewbacca. I was bidding on that auction you've um, that uh, Pyro has uh, for the, uh, uh, or not Pyro, Pyro's commenting on it, uh, you know, for the uh, chiseled face midnight stag. That's pretty funny. That's good stuff on there. See, Ben, uh, the game changer is exactly what I was uh, thinking about when I said, that Mercur, you're paying Mercur costs for stainless steel prices. The game changer is exactly the one I had in mind. We'll do a cross grain nice and fast. I can, I can tell we're removing the stubble nicely. I've gotten a good close shave here. Nice glide with this, with this lather today. It's an expensive soap. It costs a good bit. All of my SV soaps have been bought used. But here's the thing. I got to be willing to bet that they are such that they're going to just last. Kind of like 
Martin de Condre. They're hard, they're concentrated. And so it may cost $30 for a 10, but what if that $30 lasts you two years? Then all of a sudden, that cost is not too bad, eh? Kind of average, uh, you know, works out in the end. See, Ben, I, I think I agree with you. I think going vintage in the beginning is a very nice way to go um, because you can get several different vintage razors for 20, 25 bucks if you find a good lot on eBay. And so then you've got the variety to have some fun with it, if that's your personality, but you've got the reliability of those vintage razors. And so, yeah, go crazy later. But start out with that group of vintage. You're not breaking the bank like I did, buying all those. I bought one Edwin Jagger. I bought maybe four Mercours, maybe five. And I bought maybe four or five Parkers within the first six months of uh, maybe the first year of, uh, of starting this thing. And they're almost all gone. And even the couple that I kept, they never get used. And it's not just because they're pop metal razors. It's because these others just shave a lot better, uh, at least to me, of course. And oh, now it's time for the against the grain pass. Let's find the non-bent side of the razor. This B is feeling really good so far. Uh, the B base plate. So let's just see. Use number 401. Oh, no, that's just not bad at all. That is really, see, I could do that every day. A lot of these other razors are, are giving me some, some problems, but with the clamping down on this edge of this blade, this carve just gets so close to the edge that we have uh, such nice control. Let's just do that again. Pick up any stragglers, you know? I mean, that is, this is one of the best base plates for this, uh, For this Nasset so far. Almost, I mean, I, almost the base. I mean, maybe there's one other one that was similar, but that is terrific. Well, it's good and bad, guys, because you know what that means? It means this Nasset blade is going to keep on going for quite a while, probably. Because <laughs> if it feels that good, it's I'm not stopping. Have I tried the supply razor? No, I have not. Um, e neither the injector nor what that kind of weird blocky looking one. I uh, haven't tried either one of those. Oh, you're talking about the injector. Right, right, right. Uh, I think I read a review on it that you know, people just weren't, weren't all that super pleased with it. Um, and so I do have some vintage injectors. Uh, the first one I ever tried turned out to be really great and I've, I've been enjoying it. Um, so yeah, I'll bet the, uh, the vintage ones are the way to go, uh, in that regard, man. Oh, that's terrific. That's a nice close shave. That is tremendous. And, uh, yeah. That's lovely. All right. So Sterling's going to come now with the Responders for Life. A little limited run they did a year or two ago. And it's the same scent as Tom Ford Fresh Vetiver. And I'm a big fan of that. Now, Sir, sometimes Sterling is kind of an intense splash for my skin. And so I can actually stir up a little bit of redness. I've got no irritation during this shave at all. This stuff's so good. I just want to want to rub it everywhere. It's a, uh, I don't know. It's just got kind of, uh, it's got a little bit of class, a little bit of character. It's not all up in your face all the time. I mean, sometimes I am in the mood for midnight stag, um, but sometimes I'm not. And this stuff is uh, just uh, tremendous. It's got some interest. It's got, uh, but it's not too classy with some of those high scents that kind of, get obnoxious after a while. I'm just a big fan. Ah, Schick M1. 
Oh, the dial adjustable. I do have a dial adjustable. I don't know how many ones there are. And so maybe I have the same one. Okay. Now, hey, uh, what's the dial range for you with that Schick M1? Is the is the lowest setting like the one? Is that very mild? Is it too mild? And then the highest setting, can you tell a big difference in the settings? Uh, does the high, does it get aggressive? You know, what's the range like on that? If you don't mind typing, typing and telling us. Oh, that gray vetiver is nice. Ah, very good. So let's cap that back up. I do have the soap for that, and the soap is delicious as well. Thank you, Sterling, for putting that together. And then we do have the Fine American Blend. Um, the splashes for Fine are kind of overpriced in general. And so if, um, like with the Fine Fresh Vetiver, I would, I'm definitely glad that I have this instead of the Fine Fresh Vetiver because this costs a lot less, and it's pretty much the same thing. Hey, Peter, got finished with your meeting. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Uh, so here's the EDT um, from Fine, AB for American Blend. And I haven't really heard too many people uh, talk about the EDT in terms of comparing it with like Sterling's EDTs, you know, that sort of thing. So I don't know how, how it rates, um, but it seems to work well enough for me. But, uh, but there we go. So the 401 was a tremendous shave. Uh, with the against the grain, I can finally report that that against the the, the grain metric in my little drop down on my app, I can fi I finally don't have to put tuggy for that section anymore. This was really pretty comfortable. <laughs> yes, yes, it would take that. Um, you know, they do listen to people, and if enough people uh, want to bring it back, uh, I mean, they could bring it back as another limited run for another charity. You know, they could do that. Uh, I'm really glad that I did buy the set uh, when they came out. I don't know if I knew about Tom Ford Gray Vetiver by that time. I think I probably did. And so that's probably what caused me to go ahead and say, hey, I, I want to get that sent. Yes, yes. There we go. See, Zesty is uh, mentioning what the American blend is a dupe of Fines American Blend, as far as I can recall, Yves Saint Laurent, Rive Gauche, and uh, yes, exactly. That's what Zesty's saying, uh, and he likes it as well. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Oh, Rive Gauche got discontinued, huh? Oof. Well, then my American Blend is uh, going to be a cherished item then. So, how about that? Gotcha. Thanks for the news. So we've got a tremendous lather here. And that does work nicely with the, the gray vetiver scent that we've got on the Sterling uh, R4L. They play together very nicely. So we'll clean up. And then if anybody has any questions, you can jump in or talk amongst yourselves. So the carved razor was my desert island razor because for this exact reason, this is the kind of shades that I've uh, come to expect from this razor, uh, whether I have a 401 use blade in it or whether I have something younger, maybe I just have to do less passes with it, but it's just tremendous. The, uh, I bought the carve. And then I realized that I didn't need my Rockwell anymore once I had the carve. Uh, it's uh, just kind of better in all respects for, for what I prefer. And, uh, and so I sold the Rockwell, didn't look back. Oh, two versions of the Reeve Gauche. I think both are discontinued now. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, well, I'm not going to be buying any Reeve Gauche. <laughs> but that's good to know for anybody else. So a nice, nice close shave today. Okay, let's do the American blend. I'm going to be smelling good tonight as I finish up some, some work. 
in a sense, it's a little frustrating doing these frags because I don't usually, um, because uh, you're, I don't have a lot of matching frag and splashes. And so that means that the, the, the scent that lasts on me for the next few hours after the shave is always a combination of the splash and the fragrance. So this is uh, jumps out a little brighter than the, uh, in comparison to the gray vetiver. And, but it's, it's classy, it's not too bright. Yeah, that's good stuff. I like that too. All right. So I think we're, oh, let's see how much water we used up. We loaded for 40 seconds, I think, and it turned out to be plenty. I think I did four or five passes of shaving and I probably had two or three passes remaining in the bowl. So plenty of lather was generated and I needed plenty of water to do it. We're looking at about 27 or 28 milliliters of water used. And if you ever look on my, my, my data, my posts, um, right now it's showing the teaspoon equivalent. And so it's doing a math behind the scenes. And so if I look right here in this graduated jigger and I say, uh, you know, 27 milliliters, then that's what I type into my thing. And then it converts it to teaspoons. And so you might look at the uh, data and say, you know, 8.1 teaspoons. How are you measuring that out? You're crazy. You know, but that's why it's just because of the math, because I input in milliliters now because of this jigger. And I tell you what, uh, it is easier to remember, like when I'm done with my shave and I go and I do the, I put in the basic data during normal shaves, not in lather games. I'll put in the basic data that night, right after the shave. And then I'll do all the pros the next day sometime. And when so many times it's, you know, three and a half teaspoons, you know, four teaspoons of water. When it's measured in teaspoons, it's a smaller number. And so there's a lot of variation, like three and a quarter teaspoons, that, that sort of thing. But when it's in the milliliters, it's an easier to remember number because it's not like three and a quarter. It's more like 22 or 27. I'm having a much easier time remembering how much water I'm adding uh, when I do it in milliliters. So that's been a, something that I didn't know would happen as a result of switching over to the jigger from the syringe that I used for uh, so many years. Ah, Azaro Por Om. I think I have that one or at least a, a sample of it or something like that. Or no, maybe I tried it. Okay. Now, see, that's funny because I think I tried Azaro Por Om, maybe a sampler, and it didn't jump out at me as something that I liked which is odd, but yeah, I'll have to check out that. Thanks, man. Thank you, Zesty. All right, so I'm going to give my, my puck here a wipe down, and um, this is that Parker container, um, and it's wood, and it's holding up, you know, because the water is, uh, uh, you know, of course, the brush uses some water when I load up, but then it's able to kind of dry out, and the lid, uh, I imagine it's going to split and stuff someday, but it'll probably be quite a while. And this was maybe nine bucks or something on Amazon. The lid, of course, isn't airtight. And so that does let the, uh, the moisture in here slowly over time evaporate out. So it's definitely going to be kind of a, a mold-free environment with, with this kind of setup. But it's simple, and I like it. I might move this to, I managed to get a hold of a Saponificio Veracino, uh, uh, the wooden soap bowl, you know, and I may move this over to that. All right, guys. Um, wow. What a, what delicious scents we've got going on today. Some of my favorite things, uh, big and happy about that. I'm going to disassemble the razor here and carefully put the blade on the little washcloth. And there we go. Thank you guys for joining. It's been terrific. We'll say goodbye and uh, we'll see you tomorrow for use 402. And um, uh, let's see what we can expect for uh, tomorrow. Oh, um, nope, I can't. I can't tell you 
Oh, no, yes, I can. Because if I look at today's Lather Games thread, it will tell me uh, what tomorrow is. Um, if you like animal charities, uh, Chewbacca, who joined us for a while there, and he may be uh, still listening in, he has a post on the Shave Bazaar. If you are a Reddit member, you can, or you want to be one, you can join up. And uh, it's Shave underscore Bazaar. If you go to Reddit and then uh, reddit.com forward slash R forward slash Shave underscore Bazaar. That's where I get a lot of my used stuff. And right now he has, uh, it's been posted now for about 13 hours. Um, he has a full set of Midnight Stag from Chiseled Face and it's the vintage version. It's the one like prior to this one. So it's got a cool old look to it. Um, and it's the, it's the, uh, the shave soap, the aftershave splash, the cologne, the EDP, and a bath soap. And all of what you pay uh, is going to go to charity. Uh, and it's an animal rescue type charity. And, uh, and it's also to kind of honor and remember uh, 120 in a 55 who passed away in the last couple of weeks, a, a member of our, our uh, shaving community and uh, uh, rescuing animals and, and dealing with them was just a passion of his. And so we're kind of remembering and honoring him in that way. And it's also a passion of Chewbacca's as well. You're welcome, man. And so if anybody wants, the, the cost is up there right now. The bidding is up to like uh, 115 or something like that last time I looked. And uh, and if you guys want to go to go to a great charity, see what he's doing is instead of you sending him the money and him sending you the set, you actually will send the charity, whatever you bid, you'll send that amount directly to the charity and then you'll get a confirmation from them and then you'll send it to him kind of thing. Or he has a, a mediator in case you don't feel like sending it to, to that. He has another trusted uh, Redditor who's a, a moderator, I think, that kind of thing. And uh, they're both great folks. But um, uh, and so then that money just goes all to that charity. So it's pretty cool. Um, and he's doing that as a part, kind of as a part of the Lather Games. Um, and then we've got some jokes on there. Somebody said, I'm going to bid this much on it just to have it destroyed <laughs> because there are some haters of Midnight Stag. That's for sure. So if anybody want, is interested in that, uh, jump on that and, uh, and help out. And I, uh, well, let's see, when does it expire? It would be nice, right? Um, if I told you that, because somebody may be viewing this a year later, it is now 2021. And uh, let's see what he said. Um, offers accepted from now until Monday, the 28th, Monday, June 28th at 1 p.m. Central Time in the United States. And there you go. And then comment with the amount that you are prepared to donate. And then uh, at the close, he will contact the most generous benefactor to arrange shipping and he will cover the shipping charge. So none of your donation is going to go for the shipping. And uh, within the first few minutes, we got to the minimum. <laughs> so so there was that. And uh, uh, just a, a tremendous thing. So it's a great cause um, and great guys. And we're remembering uh, 120 and a 55 as well. Another awesome guy. Uh, with that. So if you feel like it, check that out. And it comes with a, a deer mask uh, that Chewbacca used during this year's Lather Games. And in that article uh, selling it, he shows you the post that he used to show you what he did with the mask as a part of his many creative endeavors to entertain us and to be awesome and special during the Lather Games. So there we go. Hey, Peter, bye for now. Yeah, take off for lunch. Peter's over in South China, so his schedule is definitely different than mine. All right. I th oh, man, the smells are just continue to be wonderful here. Um, take care, guys. We'll go ahead and sign off. And, uh, uh, and tomorrow, oh, I was looking up and see what tomorrow was uh, on, the, on the Lather Games. Do Um, so when I'm looking at uh, scrolling through the R wet shaving and here is the lather games right here. So desert Island day was today and the surprise challenge was regrettable purchase day. Um, now the write-up was 
officially said a really dumb wet shaving purchase have you made? I mean, really dumb, a terrible performing product, a, a stinky aftershave, a $400 brush in the shape of an Easter egg, a lathe. Tell us about it. If you've somehow been able to dodge this uh, neo, this bullet neo style in wet shaving, tell us about any regrettable purchase that you've made. Um, another one that I did, something that didn't perform, it jogged something in my memory. Um, uh, a, a local vendor in my town came and had a puck of sandalwood and laurel soap. Smell was terrific, but obviously I think she was focused on skincare ingredients. And so it didn't lather up worth anything at all, but it wasn't too bad because I was supporting her small business and it wasn't really too bad of a price either. I think it was just nine bucks. So all good. It's all good. So that was the challenge today. And so I think my main ones are the, uh, all those Zamac razors that I bought when Amazon was the only thing I knew and all that cream like Taylor Taylor Bond Street and George F. Trumper, for instance. All right, guys, terrific to be with you and hang out. Zesty, Ben, Jay, uh, Chewbacca, Peter, take care of you guys. All right, good night.